Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Comstock Channel. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. I'm joined by Joe Camp of Comstock Investments. Well, let's take a look at Wednesday's market action here. At midweek, things kind of took a nosedive. And we're going to talk about the whys and wherefores and what that may mean as we head into the next WASD report. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this video by clicking on that bell icon down below. And, of course, share it with your friends and relatives as well. Okay, Joe, uh, everything looked pretty red on the uh, price tables and uh, the charts kind of took a nosedive today. What was up with that? Losses across the board. I think the charts having a lot to do with it. It had been such a considerable run up that we got to levels where futures looked a bit overbought, uh, at least on uh, the basis of volatility. That five-day run was considerable enough. It uh, fits too with what we thought uh, led to that rally, which was fund short covering, a wave of that pausing here. And uh, you also have these rallies reaching levels where we're gonna have some interest and have had some interest in farmer selling. So those things combined, uh, I helped lean on this market settling down today after uh, that big run up since the start of May. Well, I know we talked about it. Uh, Matthew and I were talking on Monday after the market action had that big run up and we had talked about the possibility of giving some serious thought to adding two sales at that time have you changed your mind any at this point no we're talking about adding to sales uh, after it had been a while uh, since we really really had patience on old crop catch-up selling or wrapping up what was needed there if at all we look at new crop sales as sales or hedges that are just beginning here and what can still be a scale up type approach into higher price levels going forward. It's just that run that we're bringing up here. And let's recap it for corn and soybeans. We're talking about since their May 1 lows, a 29 cent rally for July soybeans. They rallied a whole dollar over just about five sessions. And it did get to a point where uh, farmers want to reward that rally. It's encouraged by those out there like us looking at the chart, thinking we could run into a little bit of technical pushback uh, at these levels. And it also aligns with what we know to be the, the condition of uh, farmer attitudes right now, whereas uh, they're a bit discouraged about planning delays, certainly, and, and you, you have that worry about what you're gonna be able to put in or not here for the new season. At the same time, we're maybe sitting at home in between rain, you know, during rain delays and, and having a better look at the market, talking with, you know, the advisors here and saying that uh, this is a chance where we ought to do something. And that something here these last couple of days was to reward the rally with some advancement of cash sales. Uh, that can be a source of pressure on the market. Again, a shift from what we saw as a uh, fund short covering ultimately those contracts being bought back in large part by the commercial hedgers on some new sales here and that's important if we look at the the technical aspect of it but also included the volume and open interest got to a point yesterday where the volumes started to slow down but open interest not diving considerably like you might expect if it was just all short covering from those speculators instead those contracts are again changing hands and we do have some fresh selling interest uh, from the hedgers out there to go along with this rally. Well, I know you had documented some information you wanted to point out to our audience. Um, maybe you can uh, share some graphics with us, if you could, about uh, some of the things that really caught your attention here in Wednesday's trade. One of our trading platforms, well, that's a sea of red, not a pretty picture. Uh, that's the, the corn in the left-hand top, the beans down, the wheat, also, we can get to the livestock. They were lower for the most part. Hogs, some slight strength at the close to provide that small bit of green there. But to give you a look at the chart and how this has been important, uh, particularly all of a sudden as of late, it would be this potential breakout that we've seen occur. And that, again, since the start of May, we have these lows here for July corn, 443 and three quarters. Uh, the move early on in that session did not hold below the 20-day moving average that we have in blue. The 20-day moving average splits these red lines. 
There's something we've talked about on the show before. The Bollinger Bands are a simple measure of volatility, two standard deviations away from that 20-day moving average. Well, we really rallied up to that band and then exceeded it, which can be uh, a positive thing for the bulls here. It's a signal of a breakout, potentially after some of the compression of the volatility and narrowing of the bands with a relatively sideways trade, you've got a breakout and that and one that uh, continued even after it got past uh, these highs from late in March. Uh, beyond that, though, again, after about five sessions up, we were poked out far enough above that upper Bollinger Band, uh, but without the same type of follow through momentum. You can see, again, the volume leveling off somewhat that ultimately uh, caused some uh, bearishness leading into today's session. Today's action returning this price back within the Bollinger Bands. And as we can see, the settlement basically right on top of the yellow line, which is the 100 day moving average. That's an important level for traders to keep an eye on here as we go forward. The next important downside target would be back to 450, that 20 day moving average. But if it is just a simple uh, leveling off of the volatility and a settling down of the technicals, we can look at some of these upside targets. Also something we've showed before here in technical updates on the channel. We've got this green line marking out here, just barely above 475 is going to be this purple line, a 50% retracement objective for the move down from the October highs. October back here, this spike um, that we had up to 533. If we get to that level 475 to 478, we'll watch for technical pushback uh, and otherwise thinking that if we can clear that, it's on to that next very important point of psychological resistance at $5. Beyond that, I wanted to show you somewhat of a similar look for July soybeans. Also, the rally poking well above that upper Bollinger Band. Today's move, returning price back down within that volatility band, but still, unlike corn, some room ahead of that 100-day moving average. That, for me, would be a potential downside risk leading into tomorrow's trade, roughly 1219 for, for this July futures contract. If we mark out the same sort of Fibonacci retracement levels here, uh, I think what we'd see is that first objective would be 1281 or so on the chart for these July futures to complete this broader 50% retracement of the move down from the October highs up to 1421 for uh, this contract. But besides that, one thing we're circling and in keeping it track of is this gap that was opened uh, on the first day of the calendar year. To close that, it would take a move up to 1312. That's something uh, we're gonna watch to potentially uh, have some up upside selling targets um, laid out against. It would be close to that $13 mark, which would potentially attract some interest. Uh, before that, one other thing I would, would just point out on the bean chart, really simple measures of, of technical objectives that we can, we can mark out here. If this is a broader sort of double bottom formation that we're putting in here, we could mark out this move uh, from the uh, late February low uh, to the recent March high. It was almost exactly a dollar. If you tack on a dollar to this recent March high, we could potentially rally up towards that 1320, 1340 level. Uh, and so these are upside objectives that seem pretty far ways out. But after this, again, one day rally over the past five sessions, um, that's something we can have in mind down the road for uh, marking out some of these sales targets. Of course, we have the WASDI report that will be coming up at the end of this week. Do you have any early estimates on the report or what are you looking for in those numbers? We had uh, report estimates published in this morning's Comstock report. Dan put those together in a table uh, showing where the analysts expect ending stocks to end up for this last marketing year for one, which for corn, soybeans and wheat are all a touch lower. We would expect like for corn exports to potentially be revised higher. Uh, for soybeans, we could see the crush demand moving up to help tighten up the carryout levels. 
but it's the opposite of that for next year's projections. And that's one reason why the May report is so important because it provides the initial estimates for, in this case, the 2020, 2024, 25 marketing year. And those are expected to grow at least in this first print because of how, of how they'll include those so-called trend line yields that would be record large for both corn and soybeans, uh, the previous acreage numbers from the March report, and uh, just a few minor adjustments to demand based on size that would, in this case, lead to slightly higher ending stocks growth into this next uh, marketing year. I saw the wheat market got hammered pretty good once again today. Uh, what's behind the weakness in the wheat trade? Are they just trading on moisture or is there more to it? Seems to be very much a weather market. And for the wheat, it can be right the opposite of the impact for the row crops. Uh, you have the planning delay storyline with wet weather popping up here or there, but that also has a mint uh, Western Kansas, some of those areas of the Southern Plains finally getting some intermittent pop-up showers and potentially more in the forecast to come. And you had that be more of the focus than what could be further planning delays for now, because the hope is if we get past uh, later today and early tomorrow, a lot of the country will clear out again and allow that planning to advance before early next week, some of those showers popping up from the Gulf uh, and from the South west as well into the southern plains that would be more helpful for our winter wheat crop there that has before uh, just now been deteriorating quite considerably in condition ratings the same could be said too where we have a generally improved forecast for those growers abroad most particularly russia which we've been keeping an eye on but we're just a few days away from the annual wheat quality tour right we'll have more information come on that already uh, some folks poking around in oklahoma and the difference is going to be about how we feel about this crop and its potential relative to say a month ago or a month and a half, two months ago coming out of the winter, uh, which is not quite as hot as it was, uh, but still also relative to where it was a year ago. And that's the general difference is that it's gonna be much improved from last year in most cases, uh, but at the same time, it can be not quite as improved as we hoped it would be coming out of the winter. Well, I want to change the the page here, if you don't mind, and talk a little bit about livestock. They seem to have a pretty tough day here on Wednesday. Are we blowing out any support on livestock trade right now? At this point, it's been a back and forth yo-yo that doesn't put uh, these cattle contracts uh, first up against any uh, real critical levels of support on the chart. The move today does uh, put some of these futures below their, say, middle of the range moving averages, like we showed uh, for corn and soybeans. The 20 day moving average has been lost in several cases, which can be a negative. Uh, I think it's the ebb and flow of uh, uh, trader positioning. So that would be the opposite of what we observed over these last several days for the grains uh, with those speculators exiting short positions. In the livestock market, you've had those uh, money managers having built up considerable uh, large net long positions in the market and they're shedding some of that risk here at the at the moment now that can change in a hurry and that's the same conversation we've had just before the market's been able to rebound but whether it's after an initial knee jerk move down because of the bird flu concerns here or there over the last month uh, or because of just general technical selling or the outside financial markets that oftentimes have weighed on the market day to day well you get to a point like we're seeing now again where the board has dropped below most of where we think these cash averages are at and that can be something that helps improve this uh, futures market trade on into the week as we have our cash market develop more fully today and and by all accounts as it has already traded at, at levels that are much firmer than the futures currently point to well, it seems like the economy overall is performing a little better than expected and it seems like that tends to uh, lead to thoughts that the Fed probably won't be reducing uh, interest rates at least anytime soon, maybe not at all this year. Now, I thought maybe that would be a little more supportive to the livestock trade here. That had been the major theme that uh, we were doing well for as long as we've had a recession called for us. Uh, the numbers have been pretty solid. And for that reason, as you mentioned, push, pushing back the view for the Fed and their 
uh, eventual likelihood of when they're going to begin to reduce interest rates. But the latest numbers have been maybe giving us pause. Uh, they did weigh on the stock market here and then all of a sudden rallied the stock market when that jobs report came out just this last Friday at weaker than expected levels. And that was back to being that bad news is good news for the stock market because it means uh, the Federal Reserve might uh, eventually cut interest rates and, and do so before the end of the calendar year. Uh, but that's what we're dealing with, that kind of uncertainty that uh, the hedge funds in particular are sensitive to, and I think we're again today. Well, of course, volatility is finally picking up in the markets here, and this would be an ideal time to uh, become a subscriber to our information out there because there is a lot of timely information coming out, a lot of uh, oh, maybe target points that you guys point out uh, to be aware of, and maybe some uh, sales points that you need to achieve uh, in your marketing plan for this year. So a lot of people have already taken advantage of that, but this is the time to maybe take advantage of that one month trial that we have for just a dollar. And you can get access to uh, that inside information, if you will, that uh, Comstock puts out. If somebody has questions of you directly, Joe, how do they reach you with more questions? Yeah, my email is joec at comstock.com. Comstock.com has access to all of our contact information. So be glad to hear from anyone. And uh, Joe contributes a lot to the uh, newsletters that are put out uh, twice a day, I guess, by Comstock. So uh, Joe is one of the authors of some of that information. So I highly encourage you to check it out. All right. Well, thank you, Joe. We'll let you go for now. And uh, good luck riding through this WASD report. I appreciate the help. That's Joe Camp of Comstock Investments. For producer Brianne Hendrickson, I'm Marlon Bowling. We'll catch you next time on the Comstock Channel. Thanks for joining us on our Comstock YouTube channel. Don't forget, you can also find us on Facebook and TikTok as well. Futures trading involves risk. The risk of loss in trading futures and or options is substantial, and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results.